toxic ischemic brain injury. Good afternoon, greetings from friends in India. I am presenting uh, interim subgroup analysis of my study entitled Posterior Limb of Internal Capsule Involvement in Neonatal Hypoxic Ischemic Brain Injury Looking Beyond Patterns. Posterior limb of internal capsule, that's the internal capsule, is a deep subcortical projection fiber which comprises of an anterior limb, a geno, and a posterior limb. So our study was aimed at characterizing the uh, posterior limb of internal capsule involvement in neonates with hypoxic ischemic brain injury and to determine its prognostic significance. It was a prospective study involving 40 normothermic term neonates and all the neonates were imaged within the neonatal period with a preference, uh, preferably within the first seven days of life. Neonates with major congenital anomalies and inborn errors of metabolism were excluded from the study. The MR imaging was done on a three Tesla MR system. The images were evaluated for the distribution of signal and diffusion abnormalities, patterns of injury, and the corresponding ADC values were estimated. In this presentation, I'll be confining myself to the details of the posterior limb of internal capsule involvement alone. The radiological severity of hypoxic ischemic injury was assessed using a MR va uh, validated MR based scoring system called the Rutherford system and the clinical outcome at six months was classified as normal or abnormal. Abnormal included death and abnormal neurological examination based on Amiel Thiessen method. Uh, in our uh, study out of in our study out of 40 neonates 24 neonates had oh sorry, 24 neonates had uh, severe HII, 11 had moderate, 4 had mild and 1 had a normal MR. At the end of 6 months, 68 percentage of the neonates had abnormal neurological examination, 20 percentage of the neonates expired and 12 percentage of the neonates had a normal neuro uh, clinical outcome. So uh, of, of the 40 neonates, 31 uh, neonates, that is 77 percentage of the neonates had PLIC involvement and PLIC involvement was common among neonates with severe HIV. And 100% uh, uh, and, uh, of the neonates with global hypoxic ischemic injury and multicystic encephalomalacia had PLIC involvement. And as a general observation, the PLIC involvement was commonly picked up on diffusion weighted imaging than conventional MR sequences. As a general trend, with the increase in severity, there was a fall in the mean ADC value. With the lowest mean ADC value recorded in the neonates with severe HIE of 743. And neonates with global hypoxic ischemic injury had the lowest mean ADC value of 605. Uh, the severity of PLIC involvement was then characterized based on the PLIC subscore, which is a subscore of the Rutherford system and was graded as 0, 1, and 2. So as we see here, out of 24 neonates with severe HIE that I had presented already, 23 neonates, that is 92 percentage of the neonates had a PLIC subscore of 2. And by uh, and correlating that with the clinical outcome at six months, out of 35 neonates with an abnormal clinical outcome at six months, 30 neonates had some form of PLIC involvement, made a subscore of one or two, and out of which 25 neonates had a subscore of two. So this reflects that the involvement of PLIC had an odds ratio, had an independent odds ratio of 24 for the development of abnormal clinical outcome at six months, while a subscore of one and two had an odds ratio of four and 26.7 respectively for abnormal clinical outcome. So one more we have observed is a negative linear correlation between the ADC value of the PLIC and the severity of HII with a significant negative correlate of minus 0.6. And based on the ROC analysis, a cutoff, of, uh, a cutoff ADC value of 963.5 at the PLIC had a sensitivity of 80 percentage and a specificity of 85.7 percentage, but a high very negative predictive value of 96.7 percentage. 
So involvement of the PLIC in our study was characterized by loss of normal T1 hyperintensity of the posterior limb of the internal capsule with or without diffusion restriction and sometimes we also see T2 prolongation of the PLIC. So the results of our study were in comparison were comparable with the results that were already recorded. So out of 31 neonates with PLIC involvement, 24 neonates had severe HII, reflecting 100% sensitivity. The ADC values of the PLIC were lower in neonates with severe HIE. And a PLIC subscore of 2 had a high sensitivity, predictivity, sensitivity, specificity, negative and positive predictive value for severe HIE. So a higher severity of PLIC involvement was associated with severe HIE. And we observed a negative linear correlation between the mean ADC values of PLIC and the severity of HIE. By which I mean to say that with the increase in the severity of the hypoxic ischemic injury, the ADC value falls. So all 25 neonates with PLIC subscore of 2 developed an abnormal clinical outcome at 6 months. That reflects a 100% specificity for abnormal outcome. So involvement of the PLIC, its severity of involvement and the mean ADC value of less than 963.5 into 10 to the power of minus 6 had were predictive of abnormal clinical outcome at 6 months. So showing some of my representative cases, this is these are the MR images of a 3 day old term neonate with the radiologically severe HII showing uh, PLIC involvement. Here the PLIC shows loss of the normal T1 weighted hyperintensity with T2 showing T2 prolongation, diffusion restriction and a low ADC value of 543. And this is a, these are the MR images of a four day old term neonate with basal ganglia thalamic pattern of injury, diffuse T2 weighted hyperintensity of the basal ganglia and the thalami showing PLIC involvement. This is, these are the MR images of a seven day old term neonate with meconium stained amniotic fluid delivery, uh, diffuse hyperintensity of the supratentorial white matter on T2 and diffusion weighted imaging consistent with white cerebrum sign showing the involvement of PLIC and corpus callosum. So one pitfall of the diffusion weighted imaging is pseudonormalization. The diffusion weighted imaging pseudonormalizes by seven days of age. So how do you overcome that? So this is a 12 day old term neonate with basal ganglia thalamic pattern of injury, normal appearing diffusion and ADC, but the ADC value is still low with 766, which is 766. So concluding my presentation here, involvement of PLIC in neonates with HIE is associated with higher grade of injury and has a significant prognostic value. So the markers of severe hypoxic ischemic injury are PLIC involvement which is a high sensitivity of 100% in our study, higher grade of PLIC involvement that is a PLIC subscore of 2 with a high sensitivity of 95.5 and a high specificity as uh, as good as 100 percentage comparable with the other studies and a low ADC value in PLIC and what the predictors of abnormal clinical outcome at 6 months include the involvement of PLIC, a PLIC subscore of 2 which had a high specificity of 100 percentage and a low mean ADC value of the PLIC of less than 963.5 into 10 to the power of minus 6. So based on our observations what, are, what do we recommend? So our routine clinical report or routine radiological report in neonates with HIE should not only specify the pattern of injury saying that it is basal ganglia thalamic or multicystic encephalomalacia or watershed pattern but should also include indicators of severity. Ideally speaking an objective MR based validated scoring system we have several which have already been reported which have been validated and radiological predictors of long term out prognosis which include pattern of injury, the radiological severity score and the quantitative ADC value of the PLIC. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now thank you very much because we are already one minute uh, in the next session. I invite the last three speakers that wh whoever wants to ask them questions he can do outside the hall and invite the rest of the neuroradiologists to join hall A, it's upstairs, for the three consecutive uh, neuroradiology presentations in hall A upstairs. Thank you very much.